Yo, what is going on, you constipated cacturns? Today we're going to be playing some games with Galissapod Zork and Expanded. Um, this is a list that recently got uh, top 16 at Anaheim Regionals, and I actually just, I love this list. It has a ton of options um, for beating all kinds of decks, mill decks, control decks, standard, uh, like, standard decks, like standard, like, Zork Garb, like, uh, standard decks that just kind of hit you. Uh, in the mouth, uh, it, yeah, the two stand in. Um, you know, got the Glissa you got the Muck line, you got the Giraffe, you got the Orangaroo, um, and down to support lines, you got the Faba, AZ, Acerol, like so many options with this list. I actually really, 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 really love this list. Um, yeah, that's about all I, all I got to say on it. Um, it has a ton of options, it even plays the Skyfield, has two eggs, so you can really constantly fill your bench still if you want to and just ride is beating people down double stand in really good against zoro garb they fill their bench to one shot you and then you can go like back to back stand-ins against them um yeah i got nothing else to say on it let's go ahead and get into some games and try it out. all right we're getting into the first game here it looks like we're playing against turbo dark all right all right all right um not too worried about it um should be a pretty close matchup i guess um <clears throat> And one shot him. I mean, if he plays like a Skyfield version of Turbo Dark, we got the Stand in Zorks to get pretty easy one shots. Then uh, we got the turn one Grass Energy, which has always been super nice to get. Uh, turn one with uh, Zoro Pod Standard Expanded doesn't matter. Um, so we should be able to uh, look to maybe do an. We could look to maybe be able to do an early GX attack with the Glissapod. Um Man, I forgot what what's the name of Glissapod GX attack. I completely. I'm drawing a blank. I'll have to check when I search my deck. I played so much Glissapod uh, last season. I can't even remember what his name is. Wow, that's crazy. All right. Um, so a couple things we want to like figure out about Turbo Dark decks. One, is it a Skyfield or a Laser Bank version? And then two, do they still just play lasers anyways? Because sometimes they also they still just play lasers irrelevant of be of not playing the Verbank. They still just play Hypnotoxic Laser. Um, oh, we've got a pretty good start here. This one's all this this Dark Rye is already ready to go. Um, yeah. Oh, I'll take the end for sure. Right. So even though I had the grass energy, my hand really wasn't that great besides it. Not a whole ton of options. It was basically ultra ball for Lele for Bridget. Maybe even that was too, too awkward. Whoa. And then the follow up is even worse. Uh Oh, we are in trouble. At the very least, we have the choice band grass DCE so we can like retreat the Wimpot to the Zerua and then hope to hope, hope to hopefully top deck. Um, so probably a Skyfield version if he's got. Oh, this might actually be the version where it's just, um, Dark Rye GX, and they don't actually play the Dark Pulse Dark Rye, or they play like one. Um, but your main attacker is actually Dark Rye GX, um, or you play like a two two Dark Pulse Dark Rye, maybe I don't know. But you focus more around using this one attack with Choice Band and Laser. All right, top deck Ultra Ball. Thank you. It's getting nervous there. Um, what are we Ultra Balling away? A Via Seeker for sure. And I see Choice Band, so he might not play Fighting Fairy Belt, but I still kind of want to keep the Field Blower. Yeah, let's keep the Field Blower anyways. Definitely want to keep the DCE. And we're going to go Lele for N probably here. Ooh, I was about to say, did we just prize all our Leles? Um, yeah, Lele for N it has to be. I don't really want a Juniper away the Field Blower and the DCE. So it's going to be N. Unfortunately, I really don't want to play N here, but, um, you know, better than nothing. So go with the N. We're going to be able to wimp out probably, uh, well, it depends how many basics we get. We might have to retreat to the Lele, which is also just not ideal. Maybe we'll treat to, retreat to a Zerua. That actually, like, seems fine. Put him on Odd Prize immediately. And if he doesn't knock it out, then, um, I mean, that's also fine if he just doesn't knock out our Zerua. But if he does knock it out, um, we have the Ultra Ball for the Glissapod, the DC for the Glissapod. We can GX knock out uh, one of his Dark Rise, hopefully. Once, like I said, like, we see the Choice Band, but he could still play Fighting Fury Belt which is a little scary that's a little big for us to get over we could go lele for the faba potentially um, so there's the dark, dark pulse dark right but he plays also four dark ride gx like that's just a lot of dark ride gx um so he's gonna be able to hit very hard very fast um and it's all about it's all gonna come down to us if we're able to keep up um yeah it's very possible we just won't be able to keep up or we're gonna get run over <laughs> real fast um I think this matchup is usually pretty close. Um, it is kind of hard for for uh, Turbo Dark to hit the numbers on like one shotting Zorks and one shotting Glissapods, uh, especially if we throw an armor press in there and uh, 
an opportune time um, so it can be a little awkward for them to actually get to the one shot numbers um, it's way easier for them to get to the old numbers that they used to need to get to which is like 180 getting to the 210 is a little bit more difficult for the tur for turbo dark um, not maybe not when you play a uh, four dark ride gx though that definitely helps a ton an ultra ball edition super rod dark yeah probably doesn't need the super rod anymore um yeah no. okay so he's a little bit heavy, more heavier into the dark pulse it looks like than i had initially thought i thought he would have been a little bit lighter on the dark pulse playing for dark ride gx but it looks like he just plays all the dark rides via seeker does he have only end so we're getting end that's good and bad our hand was set up pretty well to have a decent play um but our hand also once again was not that great uh, but I almost kind of feel like I would have preferred to hold that hand. Okay, this is a this is a pretty good hand too. Yeah, we'll be, we'll definitely be fine with this hand. No complaints here. No real complaints. Um, just fake complaints. Um, yeah, this hand is definitely fine. We can go for a Polaris or for we could even maybe bridge it depending on our top deck. Like we'll send up the Lele because we have the Float Stone, and just see what the uh, top deck gives us. Because if the top deck gives us uh, DTE, we could actually just go with. Um, DC or Galissapod, then we can go like Ultra Ball for trade. We have the compressor to get rid of the eggs. Um, we could just go with um, GX plus Bridget and set up a bunch of more Zeruas. That would be fine with me. Uh, really just depends on what our top deck is. We'll see in just a second here. Let's see, knocks us out. So we haven't seen a Skyfield from him yet, so it might just be just Dark Rise. Maybe he actually doesn't even play any um, other Pokemon. Maybe he just plays Dark Rise. Which, if you don't play Skyfield, that would be like the only way you could like consistently. Um, get enough Dark Rise and play without Skyfield. Only while playing it, no other Pokemon. Alright, we have Skyfield. We have Bridget. Uh, we can just go for a big Colrus turn off the Battle Compressor and then get the. What's it called in play? We don't have the Glissapod. We do want to one shot this with the GX attack. Okay, so I think that's the plan then. Let's start with the Battle Compressor and get rid of Egg Egg Colrus here. Yeah, we might even want to try and get that one shot with the the knockout with the Zorark here instead, actually. Um, I think we want to go ahead and put Guzman in the discard pile here with the Ultra Ball. I actually don't know what I want to grab here. Probably the pod, right? That way we can probably just try and make sure we get the knockout with the pod here. Yeah, that seems fine to me. Um, if we get the knockout with the Zorark, that's even better. But if we whiff it, that's fine. Get to utilize. And we want to get the knockout with the Zorark here, ideally, just to utilize the Skyfield. Um, while we can, um, while it's in play, we don't know what kind of stadiums our opponent plays. Our opponent plays, um, so we just want to use the Skyfield while it's here. Um, there's the Colrus for nine. We just need a DC at the very least. Ooh, currently whiffing DC, and we got another Battle Compressor that we can thin out the deck a little bit more. What do we just want access to? Or oh, we we prize a lot of via seeker there's two in the discard so we did prize two via seekers that's not good um currently don't have access to dc doesn't mean we can't get there first impression is not very good um faba is probably not very good in this matchup we'll get rid of that um anything that really doesn't get us access to we want basic pokemon we want the so the primer's fine because we could set up the muck the muck would be pretty good in this matchup actually um thinking about getting rid of the field blower i don't really care that he has choice bands in play i could always douse the machine forward if i have to and then i think the az and we want to keep the chorus and the guzma in the deck i feel like yeah let's go with this i think this is decent at the very least um and then we'll trade away we just need the dc to do the gx attack at this point um might just use the Juniper as a supporter next turn. I think we're actually trading away the muck here. I'm gonna keep the stand in. There we go, DC. Oof, that got close. Uh, attach here. Retreat, and then we GX attack for the knockout. Uh, crossing cut GX. Go into an egg. If he KOs the egg, he goes back on even prizes. But if he doesn't bump Skyfield and puts a couple more Pokemon on his bench, then all of a sudden standing can look to take a knockout. There's Ace Roller. There, there's Via Seeker. Um, so we got. Plenty of options for the next turn. He could do a play here, I guess, where he goes like. I mean, maybe there wasn't really anything good to send up there. Because um, he can go Night Spear, KO two eggs, that's fine. He could go knock out a GX with this guy, depending on his hand. Yeah, I think no matter what, this is this is just gonna be about as good as anything else. 
Um, how many Pokemon does he need on his bench? If he has just six, right? Yeah, so he just puts six Pokemon on his bench. This guy's coming back for sure, it looks like. And then if he puts one more, I don't know if that's that one or not. No, it's not. If he puts one more on his bench and then doesn't bump the Skyfield and discard something, we'll actually be able to take the knockout with Standin. And that's why I sent up the egg here. So even if he goes down to, if he knocks this out with like the Dark Pulse, um, we'll go to four prizes. But then if we take a knockout with Mind Jack, he probably has to deal with that. And then he goes down to uh, three prizes. Then we can maybe just win the game from there. Uh, if he draws two prizes this turn, we could look for the knockout plus N. Um, yeah, that would probably be the play. There's a max elixir, so it's, I mean, it's probably going to be a hit. There's a hit, yeah. So he's probably dark pulsing. It just depends on... Now it just comes down to what is he actually knocking out? Is he Guzma knocking out my Zork? There's the Guzma. Actually, it looks like it would have to be the Lele in this case. So it's Guzma, knock out, Lele. Um, that's fine. He's got six on the bench, so he can take the knockout with stand in here. So that's going to be what we're looking to do. We'll set up this Zork initially. Um, I don't know if I want to... Bench the Oranguru. No, benching the Oranguru is fine, right? Yeah, benching the Oranguru is fine. Oranguru goes down, so yeah, he's got six. Mm, three times six, that's 180, so we're doing 190. Stand in it is. Attached to stand in. I could stretcher for the Zerua, but I think I'll chill on that. I think I'll just Via Seeker for Colrus here. Um, we just want Zeruas at this point. I guess I could have Via Seeker for Bridget then. Um, but I guess we want other cards as well. Yeah, this is no, this is better. I like this better still. Okay, that's a Zerua. Um, Ultra Ball away, Grass plus Ace Arola. I don't think I'm Ace Arola in this game. That's a Zerua. And then I think I'm going to trade away the other Grass. I just don't think I'm going to first impression again in this game. Don't think it's happening. We want to keep the draft because it's a basic Pokemon. We want to keep Treasure. We got this, the Guzma, ECE. We want to keep all that and stand in and knock out with the Mind Jack. Unless I miscounted. Okay, I'm better. I'm, I'm, I, I'm hoping I was better at math than... Uh, than that yeah there we go two prizes yeah, the galissapods don't really do anything anymore um but that's fine uh just go to the zorx next turn yeah we're all set up to close this one out two prizes left we have a ton of options in hand he would have to end us and we'd have to draw pretty poorly off the end i feel like uh, which is definitely possible we only have one trade set up this deck doesn't play anything like shaman or anything to like really dig deeper in the deck which i wouldn't hate to see a one of shaman in this deck actually um it's just for situations in the late game specifically when you get end low you just shaman set up draw a bunch of new cards sounds good to me um probably not necessary um if i'm set up a little bit better in this game i just didn't really set up a ton of zoroks really aggressively because I, I wasn't able to bridge a turn one um yeah i wasn't able to bridge a turn one wasn't able to find a bunch of basics as the game progressed um and kind of left in a yeah left in a pretty meh situation as far as basic pokemon go um, wasn't just able to find a lot early on. Um, hasn't affected us to get to this point. We've been able to trade pretty evenly back and forth with our opponent, though. Uh, we're currently ahead, and now we're just going to come down to uh, if they end us, will they end us, and then if they end us, are we able to draw out of it? Uh, we have one Chorus in the deck, um, so we still have a lot of access to Chorus through Ultra Ball, which we have one left. We have one Ultra Ball, one Lele, and then we have a Via Seeker. Oh, we don't have a Via Seeker in the deck, though. But he's going with a Juniper here. Didn't have access to a Via Seeker. I'm sure he would have gone with N if he did, but even if he did, uh, he might not have been able to knock us out, actually, because he's getting low on Dark Patch and Max Elixir, I think. That's his third. No, he still had quite a bit left. No, he probably would have been able to uh, find one off the N. Surprised he didn't even just have one in hand there. Who's got left? So yeah, yeah, one more. He had two max elixir, and there's a there's the fourth dark patch. Um, so yeah, it's gonna be he's gonna go swing with dark rye and hope it's enough. We know it's not. Um, we pretty much have the game set up here. I don't think it's possible for us to lose. We played the prism dark rye too. And so I think his deck is literally just all dark rise, uh, and he just doesn't play any other Pokemon. And that's I mean it can work like that with playing the four dark rye GX. Um, and such. Does he play laser? We haven't seen a laser yet. I guess it's still possible he plays it. He just hasn't found it. Um, but yeah, I, uh, he's literally just playing all dark rise. Um, so he's not running Skyfield because he didn't have any other Pokemon in play at any times, which means he doesn't need Skyfield to really be able to keep his his field full of dark rise. But yeah, there's the knockout on the active. Our hand. He still has six on the bench, so we can just go stretcher for stand in DCE attach and then take the knockout stretcher. Pokemon, stand in, catch DCE, evolve to stand in, and then Mind Jack once again for another two prize cards, winning us this first game. 
Yeah, but went about how I expected. We had a rough early game, and then we were able to climb back and abuse the stand in Zorak as the game progressed. All right, so I think we're actually going to open with the egg here. Um, yeah, let's go open with egg here. Lovely bunch of Zerua. Then we can go Lele for Bridget. Wimpod, Wimpod. Wimpod, Zerua, Zerua. Unless we want the Ditto or the Grimer. <clears throat> if they're not prized and the Muck is not prized. Right, we're playing against Rotom. Yay. So our whole strategy here is just going to be to constantly heal our Pokemon. This is a pretty straightforward, easy matchup. Um, there's quite a few matchups that can be like this. Um, if they can't one-shot a Galissapod or a Zorark, all we have to do is actually just constantly heal that Pokemon, and we win. Uh, or heal those Pokemon. Um, so we can heal seven times, <clears throat> which is more than enough. Yeah, we can heal up to seven times with um, Acerola, AZ, 4 via Seeker, and then Dowsing Machine. So we have a ton of healing that can be done. Um, we just need to find the cards and then uh, use them. Find the... Uh... <clears throat> yeah, we need to set up. Find our AZ, find our Acerola, and then find our VS Seekers, find our Dazzling Machine, and then we basically win. There's a DC. That's not super common. So maybe they are playing it a little bit differently than the average Rotom list. Maybe even play some way to like one shot Zorks. So we gotta look out for that. Um, actually, this matchup is easier than I thought. We play Muck. So all we have to do is set up Muck, and then we just win the game. <laughs> so yeah, this matchup is even easier than I thought. Just have to set up Muck. That's it. That's the whole game. That's the whole game plan. Don't need to do anything else. Just set up Muck, win the game. They maybe just play the DCEs to use Sky Return. Um, that's definitely possible. To get the Shamans off the board. I could see that. There's another setup. Um, yeah. It's going to be one of those easy matchups where all we need to do is set up the Muck. And then if they can't KO it, they do play energy, so it's possible they play something that can KO Muck, then we just win the game. Okay, Shrine as well. But I think that's going to do more harm than good here, as they have two Shamans in play. <clears throat> going to go ahead and grab Bridget. Um, I'm assuming they play the Fire Rotom, actually, so I don't really want to set up Galissapod. Grimer is here, Muck is here, so that's basically game if we can set that up. Could just grab one Zerua, Grimer, and Ditto. I'm actually fine with that, and just get the squad out there. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and attach to a Zerua. Probably the Paralyzing Gaze one. That's probably the best one to attach to. Yep. Attach a Paralyzing Gaze and pass. And we already have, like, four prizes to potentially happen on the Shamans. Like, we don't actually have to uh, bump this shrine ever. Um, I assume we'll see a Sky Return from one of the uh, Shamans here, though. An N will definitely take that. Our hand was dead. But that is not Guzma Knockout Grimer. So, still in a really good spot. Okay, this hand is a little awkward. It doesn't really give us a whole ton of options. There's a Seismitoad. Okay, so it's Seismitoad Rotom. That, um, Parallel City is actually super annoying. Um, that actually really makes it awkward for us on our next turn. We'll see what they got, though. See if they can get a DCE and Quaking Punches this turn. Yeah, the, the Seismic Toad is interesting. Um, this might be a lot, uh, harder than I initially thought. Our Egg is currently trapped active because of the Parallel City plus the Quaking Punch, but that's fine with us. That's really not that big of a deal. Um, yeah, I don't see that as being a really a big deal at all, actually. No longer trapped active because he plasma sliced. Not a huge fan of that play from him. Send up Zerua. We'll trade away the egg. That kind of changes stuff. Now yeah, we can go propagate. <clears throat> I guess I don't really want to put a Lele in place. So I'll trade first, and then if I whiff, I guess I'll go grab a Lele. Yeah, I really don't want to put a Lele in place. So I just get a, can get a Colrus here. No. Um, I'm still scared of the Fire Rotom, right? Yeah, that doesn't really change. Oh, no, but now I just bench. Well, no, this is fine now, though. Oh, yeah, I messed up there. <laughs> uh, definitely should not have benched the uh, Saru. I don't know what I was thinking there. 
Um, I'm just going to go ahead and grab the muck and shut off this so that way they can't goose my grimer. And then we just kind of win the game, I think. We'll see if they just concede next turn. Oh, we shut off our own ditto, though. No, but that's fine. Because <clears throat> if they can ever KO... Oh, I should have be a secret for Guzma. That was a mistake. Because then we could Guzma... If he goes Guzma, Quaking Punch, or Muck, we go Guzma, bring something else up. So I should have be a secret for Guzma there. Because that's like their only out. Okay, they don't have it. Good. Um, they can still Quaking Punch us, but then we have the potential to just punch it. Um, so quite a few mistakes on that turn. First one was... Well, I think it was fine to just bench the Zerua and not go get a Lele. I think that was actually fine looking back on it now. Um... So maybe everything else is fine too. Blocking off the Ditto is fine too because we want this to potentially just become a muck anyways. So that's also fine. Um, we should have propagated before we did that. Before we put the muck in play. But we have Glissabot to trade at the very least. So that was another mistake. <clears throat> Whole ton of mistakes this game. Yay. What would we want a Faba out of this stuff in play? Nothing really. Just Faba, Faba this I think. Not gonna come into Skyfield yet because they can bump it. And we just pass. Like, we're not being pressured. We have the muck set up. They have 10 cards, 9 cards left in deck now. Uh, oh, I should have VS Seeker. <laughs> I should have VS Seeker for Guzma because the only thing they can really do here is Guzma, bring up the muck, and trap it active. So all I need to do is just get Guzma so then that just doesn't happen. Um, so I messed up there again. <laughs> there it is Guzma, muck, toad, quick punch. <laughs> I also could have VS Seeker for Faba because then I can take away the energy off the side of the toad. Okay. It's a pass. We got uh, saved a little bit there for sure. Um, Ultra Ball and Ultra Ball. We don't really have enough resources to use the Ultra Balls anyways. And I feel like we'll be sitting on this hand for a while. Floatstone, even better. Uh, retreat. <laughs> it's like a warm-up game. Don't worry. We'll uh, be back in business soon. All right. Now we're going to Via Seeker, Guzma. I'm not going to really... I don't think I need to commit to the Via Seeker for Faba. Not necessary. There's the concede. So that matchup, super free, super easy. Set up muck, win the game. I played like super sloppy and we still ended up winning. Don't do what I did. Don't do as I do, do as I say. I pointed out almost all of my mistakes there, I think. Um, yeah, let's move on to the next one. Hopefully we hit a little bit more interesting of a matchup. All right, I got some good news and I got some bad news. Good news is we can turn to Muck going first if we want, which is great depending on the matchup. Bad news is our hand is not great besides that. And they opened uh, Eevee. Which tells us nothing. Except that it could be uh Flareon potentially. Um, I don't know what we're doing here. This is the kind of hand where I kinda of wish I had like a lily in this deck almost. Um It's gotta be Lele for N, right? I can't I don't see I don't see a way around it not being Lele for N. <clears throat> Floatstone's good. Battle Compressor's good. Zork's good. I guess we can commit the... Comp yeah, commit the Compressor now. Um, egg, egg. I think egg, egg, chorus is all we want to go with here. We could, maybe I shouldn't have committed it yet. Oh, we have a Guzman in the discard pile, so that like, makes this easier. But actually, Bridgeting next turn would also be really good. Do we go egg, Bridget, chorus? I guess is fine. We could just not get rid of a chorus, but I think we probably should. We don't have a ton of via seekers. So what about egg, Bridget, egg? Maybe that's just the move. Let's try this egg, Bridget, egg. And then we can just play into Bridget next turn, or we have access to N if we want to do a draw supporter. I'm not going to attach the Floatstone yet, because uh, there's all kinds of stuff in Expanded that can remove our tools, so it's just not worth it. It's a Fairy Energy. Oh no, we might be in for a long one here. I have a feeling this is going to be Sylveon. Hey. Alright. Um, so this matchup actually isn't a bad matchup. It's just a long matchup, <laughs> very long. Um, actually, uh, Super Poison Breath is super good in this matchup, and we will probably be doing that for the first couple turns. It's actually super good. Poisoning their Sylveon GX is insane. Like, actually, it's insane. It is insanely good. Um, we do have the Giraffe, and we do have the um, Orangaroo. So this, this matchup is actually totally fine. 
Um, it's just going to be a long one. So buckle up, guys. Um, it's going to be quite the ride. Um, at some point, they'll probably just scoop once they realize they can't beat Giraffe or Rangaroo. Um, unless, I mean, we could get, get some really bad prizes. So Giraffe here, Rangaroo's here. All right, good start already. Um, go further in. Second grass energy is here. We really want that other grass energy out of, the, out of the prizes. That's like one of our essential things to try and find because we don't want to... Hmm. I'm about to get Fabut here for sure, I think. Uh, we could hit this hard. I don't think hitting it hard is really the right play, though. I think I only want to bench one more Zoro. I think I want to leave two bench spaces open. Um, I don't really want to use the Ditto to go into anything right now, but I want access to two trades to start digging through my deck. Yeah, so we're just going to go with the Super Poison Breath. <clears throat> like I said, it's actually super good if we can get this thing poisoned, because then it becomes really awkward for them. They have to, like, heal it every turn. Um, there's a ditto, actually. So maybe we're not playing against just Sylvia. No, it probably is. Has a crushing hammer. It's not an enhanced hammer. Um, a little weird. Um, we got to be careful of Skull Grunt. There's a lot of things we got to be careful of. We'll be fine, though. It'll just take us a little bit of time. We just ever can't get caught with both grass energy in hand, and then we'll be fine. Um, we're going to fob away this floatstone. Try and go for the super poison breath. Um, we want to leave our two bench spaces open for, uh, what's it called and what's it called? I already went through this. Giraffe and Orangaroo. We don't want them to know we play Giraffe until we use Giraffe. Because um, then we can catch very important cards that are in the discard pile and get rid of them. Um, another energy top deck is not good. We're still going to go for the Super Poison Breath. Super Poison Breath. Because, like I said, it is super, just super good. Um, I don't think there's anything really to battle compress our way. Baba, get rid of the float. Um, don't need to commit anything else yet. We could go into a Rangaroo right now, but I don't think it's necessary. So I think we're just going to go with the Super Poison Breath, like I said. Tails. Playing AZ in this deck um, is also a big deal in this matchup. It makes it really hard for them to trap anything. So getting rid of the float, the float zone means they can put a Dumbbells on it now. Um, oh, they play Garb in this. That's unexpected. Um, okay. Well, we'll just follow that. And now we're going to get attacked. All right, I'm okay with this, I think. I'm not, all right, it's interesting. Um, I'm actually just gonna go ahead and punch this with a Lele and then Faba the float on the bench, I think. So we're gonna go via Seeger, uh, Faba. We're gonna Faba that float. And we're gonna punch him for 100. Uh, we should have traded first. Um, we lost our Grimer, but that's fine. Now we can commit a ditto to the bench if we want, um, which is like fine. Um, once again, still not playing this other battle compressor. I kind of just want access to everything. All right, another Zork is good. Another energy in hand is not, but I don't think we're gonna get. I don't think they have the time to skull grunt us next turn. Um, that's kind of cute though, actually. The garb. I kind of think it's kind of cute. Actually, I don't hate it. Um, there we go. Get rid of that. Um, now we can go like Guzma up the garb as well, and then lock that active, which is kind of cute. Yeah. So we're going with uh, energy drive here. Once again, I don't think they have the time to Skull Grunt us next turn. Um, they might. Um, I could have benched the Ditto there, but I'm just going to leave my bench space open in case I want to put Lele down. I definitely want to potentially put Lele down, so we're just chilling. Not getting super aggressive. I think it's just going to be a retreat to the other Sylveon here. That's what it's looking like. Um, yeah. Oh, they're just going aggressive. Oh, okay. All right. Um, all right. Okay. I'm fine with this. Um, this is where we're probably going to, like I said, I might put the Lele down. So we're probably going to go Lele for Ace Arola. Uh, it'd be very nice to run them out of DC, actually. Because then they just can't KO my Orangaroo. Which is just nice to nice to know they won't be able to do. Oh, I guess they could play Hue. So I should actually be watching my hand size here. We don't want to get hued. <laughs> Definitely don't want to get hued. Getting hued would not be good. Oh, there's our second grass. This makes it a little awkward. Um... We should be fine. I don't actually know if Ace Rolls in the deck. We're actually about to find that out as well. I think I saw it. Maybe I did it. Oh, I did. Cool. I they would just like kind of have to have the hue though. Like I don't, I don't know. Uh, Skull Grunt's actually not that big of a deal here because our hand is fine. Um, I want to bench the Ditto still then. I guess we can bench the Ditto, yeah. An energy drive for the knockout. <clears throat> Interesting Sylveon. Take on Sylveon, but I actually don't hate it. I don't hate the garb. It's actually kind of cute. Field Plowers is a good grab there. 
Here comes something. Okay, so the only two cards we're really scared of right now are Skullgrunt, which isn't that big of a deal. Skullgrunt's actually not that big of a deal. Um, Skullgrunt and Handiwork are the, uh, not Handiwork, Q. Skullgrunt and Q are like the two. Didn't even Magical Ribbon. All right, well, they definitely messed up there. <coughs> Propagation. I think um, now is when we could go into Orangaroo if we can find it. I want to go like Guzma with Orangaroo though and bring up the Garb and kind of trap that active. Okay, there we go. That's perfect. Um, so we're going to Propagation, Propagation, Ultra Ball for the Orangaroo. There's nothing really to giraffe away, so we don't need to go into that yet. Orangaroo. Yeah, we'll start putting stuff back in the deck. Starting with probably the two energy. So Oranguru comes down. We attach a grass to it. Via Seeker. Guzma. Play the Guzma. Bring up the Garb. And we manage our resources. Resource management. <clears throat> DC, DC, Via Seeker probably. Yeah, that's fine. And then we just kind of do this for a while. And if they want to commit to attacking with Sylveon. That's fine. Um, we'll just hit them with Lele again. Uh, we don't want to overfill our bench, so we're probably not going to hit with Zork. It just doesn't do as much damage. Just hit with Lele, set up two shot. If not, we just keep resource managing. Eventually make our way into the um, Giraffe when important stuff hits the discard pile. Nothing important yet. There's an N. Doesn't really affect us. No, doesn't really affect us at all, actually. We're just chilling. We don't want to thin out our deck too hard, because then we do run the risk of Handiwork doing a lot of work to us. Um, we don't want to get worked by Handiwork. I might just actually Profound Knowledge this turn. Yeah, I think I'm just going to Profound Knowledge. KOing this Garb seems fine. We're going to do a couple trades. We're going to leave the Ditto open. We don't really want to evolve the Ditto. Um, so yeah, we're going to trade this. Yeah, I think Profound Knowledge is probably... Well, then I KO it, and then he could KO us. Probably not going to KO us, though. Yeah. There's nothing really super important to get back right now, so I think Profound Knowledge in here is fine. It's unlikely they have another energy and a Kakui in hand. Um, so I think us just going... Profound Knowledge here is fine, yeah. There's another N. Looks like it doesn't do much. We have Double Zork set up. Uh, we're not super thinning our deck, so we're going to keep drawing... Aw sometimes awkwardly we could thin our deck a little bit more than I am I guess I'll trade away this muck next turn we'll keep the keep everything else but I'll trade away the muck heads goodbye DCE so I think we'll just profound knowledge again because that's like not that big of a deal um yeah I think we can trade away muck here I'm gonna keep the wind pot I'll keep like all the basic Pokemon I guess again okay, I'm not gonna trade away I could trade away a stand in but I'm not going to I'll trade away an egg on this one instead that way I have access to a stand in at all times um, which we should probably set up at some point. I couldn't make this ditto the stand-in. That way it's like hard, it's hard for them to ever like lock anything in the active. Um, I'm not gonna do it yet. I'll keep open the keep the option open to make it a glissopod potentially still. Without knowledge, I don't have to worry about guard blocking us out of trade anymore. We can just keep swinging with profound knowledge. So I somehow did get the Kakui here. That'll be annoying, but far from game ending. Just need to eventually Get it back into the active. Uh, I assume it's gonna be a flare grunt. There we go. Yeah. The grunt. Now we'll probably go with resource management on this turn. Get back some of the resources. DC, DC, via seeker. Yep, there's the hit for 110. Um. But we're gonna go prop trade, prop trade, see what we get first. But it's probably gonna be the resource management. Yeah, for the DC DC V Seeker. And we just let the Orangaru get knocked out. I mean, if we find like V Seeker for Ace of Roller plus a float stone, we will reset the Orangaru because there's no reason not to. Maybe if we find a DC as well, we would even like knock hit into the Sylveon because they only have a four card hand. Float stone, but nothing else. That's fine though. I'm not super worried about it once again. Resource management, DCE, DC, and the VS Seeker. Oh. <clears throat> there we go. And then they're going to knock us out. 
Um, but we have floatstone, grass energy in hand, so all we need to do is find the stretcher, and then we're back in business, back into the Oranguru. Uh, if we just find a DCE, that is also fine. We would just hit into the Sylveon. Double tails on the handiwork. Yeah. Um, I think I want the Ditto to have the Floatstone because that could become the stand-in. Okay, so we want a DCE here. And there's two on the bottom of the deck. Plus I got super good odds. But it's fine. Okay. None of that helps us find DCE. I guess we could have sent up something else and like first impressioned him. <coughs> that would have been okay as well. Yeah, we could have first impressioned him with this actually, with a glow upon. But I want to make it a stand in. Oof, currently. Oof. Hand is oof. <laughs> I saw a bunch of wind pot, that's fine. Because we always have a skyfield to put it and then fill up our bench with more stuff. It's because it's the option of the glow upon. Um Could be a secret for N, could be a secret for Guzma. Could just attack with Giraffe this turn, get rid of Handiwork, and Flare Grunt. <coughs> I think I like that, actually. It takes a Grass Energy, but we have 40 C left, so that's fine. Yeah, he gets another prize here, but that's not really a big deal to us. Uh, get lost. That's fine. He'll get the Knockout on the Giraffe. Like once again, though, that doesn't do that much. We don't really care. We can find a Rescue Stretcher or a DCE. We'll either start attacking or just Stretcher. Get the Oranguru back in business. So he goes Flare Grunt when he's going to knock us out anyways. <laughs> so that doesn't really make any sense. He does get the Flare Grunt on the Discard Pile, which means he can ac access it through Via Seeker. So I guess that is okay. Um, Yeah, I'm still not a big fan. All right, there's a DCE. Still going to trade twice. Um, I guess we don't want to get Skull Grunted. Maybe I should only trade well. There's two DC on the bottom of the deck, so we know we can't see all of our DC. So yeah, we're actually going to trade twice. Uh, but no, I could like thin out that. Bridget. <clears throat> Alright, that's fine. Um, attach DC to Lele, and then hit for 100. Could have evolved to Glissapod. I actually should have evolved to Glissapod. Once I put the Wimpod in play, there's no reason to not evolve to Glissapod. I'll keep the Ditto open, though. I might want a third trade at some point if I just want to dig a little bit deeper. We have the stand-in, so like we just like need to choose. What do we want to do? This or that. Um, and then choose it, and then do it. Basically, for another Flare Grunt. Yep, it's fine with me. I said, I don't know if it still makes sense, though. I would rather just have the Flare Grunt in hand, personally. Um, attack. They can go... And they have three options, but that's not a heal. <laughs> we have the DCE... Yeah, so we're gonna win this game here. Yeah, it's kind of hard to get really uh, quality games on um, expanded ladder on PDCGO, but we, I mean we played against an aggressive deck in the first one, played against an auto win as long as we set up in the second one, and then we played against control deck here in the third one. And this deck is teched out to be control. We got the adra the draft, the Rangaroo, uh, so we kind of got to see all the ways the deck can like take wins. So that's good at least. We saw what we could do against the more aggressive deck, the Turbo Dark. Uh, here in the end, we played against a control deck. Um, and you saw how the Oranguru and the Giraffe can do work. Um, so yeah, that's going to go ahead and do it for this video, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you did enjoy it, leave, leave a like on the video. If you're enjoying the content, subscribe. Leave your thoughts in the comment section down below. Links to my social medias and my Twitch live stream in the description below. Be sure to check those out. Thanks for watching. Have a good day and peace.